Mark chapter 14, verse 53. We're looking at the final night of Jesus Christ. And it's just loaded of all the activities going on. Verse 53. And remember, we've been taking all four Gospels as, as it shows up. Because when you put the four into one, you get more detail of the story. See, the church has to come out of Matthew and realize there's Luke, Mark, and John, not in that order, out there. And they led Jesus' way to the high priest. He's in the garden. And with him assembled all the chief priests and the elders described. He's going to that kangaroo court in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and Peter followed him at afar off. I'll be with you, Jesus. All the way. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> A lot of Christians today, they're far off. And there are some Christians today getting persecuted. Even unto the palace of the high priest, and he sat with them, the servants, and warmed themselves of the fire. So here comes Peter. And we're going to move down to... Verse 66, Mark 14, 66. Pick up back at Peter. And as Peter was beneath in the palace. We'll learn more from the other Gospels. He was beneath. There cometh one of the maids of the high priest. So she is a servant girl to the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, he's over there by the fire. She looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus in that. Hey, buddy, I've seen you with Jesus. And here's some people at the workplace. Hey, we saw your car at that church. But he denied, saying, I know not. Neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out unto the porch. So there's an overhang. Then he stood out on the porch and the cock crew. I don't know. Oh, no, not me. Have to be somebody else. You know, I'm an SMO. Sunday morning only. Don't get me involved in anything else. Don't you associate me. I'm a secret Christian. I let my light shine under the butcher. And the maid saw him again. And began to say to them, Everyone around that stood by, this is one of them. Aren't you that Christian? Okay. You're at the family picnic. Family said, hey, aren't you that Christian? You know, you. But he denied it again. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe the wife goes to the church. And, not me. And little after, they that stood by said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth unto Peter. Your accent is northern. And that religion came from the north. 
Oh, man. I'm a Floridian. I'm a Southern in Florida. Uh, Florida is not Southern. You went too far. When you when you came into Florida thinking you were in, in the South, you passed the wacky line. Because this is not the South. This is a bunch of North people who are, who are ready to die and couldn't handle the cold, and here they are. Retiring and dying. Not me. I don't care what I don't care what my language is. Maybe he's clean speaking. Maybe he tries to live right. You know, if I be a good doobie, God will take care of me. Just don't let them notice. See, that's the problem when I got saved, April 25th, 1987, is on April 26th, 1987, I began opening my mouth preaching Jesus. I began to tell her, hey, listen, that's wrong. You need to believe Jesus. You know, I did that for years and years. I never invited anybody to church. I left my church because it was just wicked and vile and worldly. I was still passing out gospel tracts, and I was trying to read the Bible. But he began to curse and swear. Oh, there you, there's a great testimony. Blankety, blank, 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 no, oh, blank. <laughs> That's your Catholic. <laughs> they say Peter's the first pope. You'll be out there witnessing on the streets or something like that. What are you doing? This little lady. What are you doing? Are you Catholic? Yes, I am. I thought so. Why don't you just shut up? Catholic. Don't you say anything about Mary? Catholic. I'm going to call the police on you. Here's my phone. Catholic. <laughs> Well, the Catholics get mad when you attack them. I keep telling the story about when I was in the hospital. You know, see my wife and, you know, that guy come in the, in the elevator, just two or three Catholics. Hi, Father. Hi, Father. Hi, Father. Hey, guy, what's up? Yeah, I mean, he, he's got his fruit of the loon tag in the front. So, but it's supposed to mean something. I mean, I was a preacher at, at a prison. I know, you know, wear anything like that, but you should you you ought to address him as father. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Do you have any children? No. How is he a father? Foolish kid. Don't know what he's talking about. Listen, I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic. <laughs> Cussing and swearing. That's your that's your Catholics. I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew. This is why the Baptists love fried chicken. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said unto him before the cock crow twice. Thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. Let's go to a Baptist college. And when he thought there not, he wept. And yes, I forget what it is. It's in one of my Bibles. I'm seeing it's here, not this one. But that weather vane that has the, the, the rooster on it, that's the mark, the, the confession. So what we're going to do is we're going to exalt the chicken. Like chicken restaurants, cows who can't spell, and the bucket. And the chicken has nothing to do with the story. The story doesn't have to do with the chicken, the cock crowing. It has to deal with 
You need to shut your mouth. And listen, I've, I've have had these lessons in my life. I've had things done to me. And I remember, you know what? I said something like that in preaching. I said something like that in teaching. I made a bold statement about that. Because it's kind of funny. That in verse number... Look at verse number 30. Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, this day, even this night, before the cock crow thrice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more of them with me. If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any way. What did he just do? He made God a liar. And then God turned around and made him a liar. And I'm telling you, when you get your butt whipped that way, that hurts. I'll tell you another time, when you get an unsaved person that rebukes you. And I'll tell you, I was saved. I don't know if I was in church or not, but I, I was a young Christian. I worked at General Dynamics, and we would go to the to the bar before work, have a couple of drinks, and shoot pool before going to into the yard. And I would witness. I knew this Darren. I would pick him up. I would put Christian music in. The, and my tape could say, and I'd do anything. I had messages. He he would, and he was good because he never said, you know, turn that off. And I give him rise, and I, I, I preached to him, and I, I witnessed to him, and I give him gospel. So one time we're sitting in the bar, and he says, Style, and I go, Yeah. What do you think Jesus would think? Maybe he came up with what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think if he came here right now? Walk through that door and saw so you holding that bottle and that cue stick. And I'm like, whoa. Never mind the cigarette I was smoking at that time. And you know what? Jesus took the alcohol away right away. When I got married in 1991, November, we had a dry wedding. And all of our family got all upset and then ran over to the bar. <laughs> And I told them they run over to the bar, they can't come back in, and that made everybody. So by November 2nd, 1991, I had quit drinking totally. Now, quitting smoking took me a little, little time. You don't want the world to turn around and come knocking on your door. Now, you got bumper stickers on your car. Or you got a sign in front of your house. You better watch how you treat your neighbor's yard. Your neighbor's children. And you may have to put up with some things. And just pray to God, let him handle it. And your neighbors know Sunday morning your car is supposed to be gone. It seems like Wednesday or Thursday night, they're going too. Well, I see the car t today or tonight. They must be sick. I'm just stating to because Peter stood out like a sore thumb. The man that said, oh, I'll, I'll never deny thee, Lord. Now, I don't think the Lord made it happen. Peter did it on his own. He's a fisherman. I've been with lobstermen. And they're a group of people. It's like, I mean, there's a song, Don't Let Mamas, Don't Let Your Boys Grow Up to Be Cowboy. There's another, you should know it. Don't let your boys grow up to be lobstermen. 
And a lot of things I saw with that, I I never stayed with that. I could have. I'm glad I didn't with the lobster in Connecticut. It's terrible. But we need to look at Matthew 26. And here we go. We're running the scriptures. Yeah, 69. And I know God puts it in unlike man in his books. God puts it here in this book. Then he puts something over here in this book. And he puts something over here in this book. And you'll find something in Genesis and there's something in Habakkuk. And there are Bibles out there. They will put the Bible in order the way it should. But is it real? I had a passage on, oh, you got to get, you know, I forget how they go. You got to get this Bible. It got everything all in a row. And then when he gets up in the pulpit, he'll correct it. So, Matthew 26, 69. Jesus is being punched. Spitted upon. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. <laughs> Jesus is in some kind of room or office. And a damsel servant came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Those now it's pointing Galilee is north. They're northerners, they're not southerners. What Jay says the south is you know it's it's no better than the north. All I gotta say is the northern people won and you southerners lost. <laughs> but he denied before all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Again, it's hey, didn't I see you at your church? No, not me. Hey, what are you doing here at the company physic picking? Aren't you at that church? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. And when he was going out onto the porch, so there was, there was like an overhang. He comes out on the porch. Another maid saw him. And said unto them that were there, this fellow, Peter, was also with Jesus of Nazareth. There we go. There's another northern statement. Galilee and Nazareth. They're up north in Israel. I recognize him. He walked with Jesus. Again, he denied with an oath. I swear I don't know who that man is. I'm not Peggy's grave. It's not dead. I only have an Aunt Peggy. I don't know nothing about that man. And I'll say something. Well, give me a Bible. I'll, put, I'll swear to it. May I not have another drink? <laughs> he says, I don't know the man. In verse 7, he says, I know not what thou sayest. <laughs> Jesus is a what? Now he's the man. It's not like today. You can't say he, she, him, her, it. I'm going to say it. And I'll tell you right now, Michigan, I think it was Michigan I read the other day, you can now be charged with a felony for using personal pronouns. He, she, it, it why?
Women make the babies. <laughs> Women are not to abort the babies. And a man can't get pregnant. I'll just stir the soup up. And after a while, came unto him they that stood by. Oh, here's the family. Here's all the job. And said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech be thee. Peter, you got an accent. <laughs> it's not like us down here. Now remember, Jerusalem is in the midst of Israel. There is a north, a central, and southern land of Israel. And evidently, there is, like in America, you can tell somebody is from New England, you can tell someone that's in, uh, from California, you can tell someone from down south, you can tell. And they're saying to Peter, hey, you know what? You sound Galilean. You sound Nazareth. I think you were walking with that man. Did I hear a couple of these and thous? I hear a couple of archaic words. I was there the day you were fishing. You took that coin out of the mouth. Thank you. Who? I know you didn't say Neptune. I know you didn't say Dagon. Then began he to curse and swear. Wow, he's upset. And the Catholic Church says Peter is the Pope. Okay, there you go. I can imagine what the Pope does behind closed doors with his bird brain and cardinals. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt surely deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now, Matthew states that Peter is truly sorry and heartbroken. Mr. Big Mouth could not back his words. Many preachers and Sunday school teachers, I know because I was one, we back our mouths into we say too much and then we get in trouble. And there's some preacher out there, oh, no, me! Okay, Peter, shut up. Because maybe God will put you in a circumstance. And you know what? You may come out of it lying. Oh, Peter did it three times. You know how many preachers out there, oh, I'm faithful to my wife, I love my wife, I love my children. And they're in a bed with another woman. Not me. I've had many Christians. I've been public ministry and all that. Oh, we're for you, Stalin. Where are they? Where are they? Shut up. Because you may fall off the bandwagon. Luke. God's will, Luke. Verse 22, uh, chapter 22, 56. You got to shut up. Like I said, preachers and Sunday school teachers, missionaries, all that, they got a problem with that.
is we talk too much. You get up there, and I've done this, is we get up there and just drag that story out, 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 because we think it's so wonderful and great, and everyone's like, can we hurry up? We're not going to get the good seats at that restaurant if he keeps on blabbing up there. And by Monday, they don't remember nothing. Just trying to tell you the truth. I did that one time in prison. I don't want to, I said, you guys got to pay attention. You got to get this message, know this message, listen to this message, or pay attention. Everybody, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever it was, I did. And I came back next week and I said, all right, what did, I, what did I preach about last week? I don't know. But were you here last week? <laughs> Now, you think that wonderful, great message. I mean, your preacher stories. I mean, so sick and tired of hearing a preacher talking. It's like, wait, I heard that that preacher said it, that preacher said it, that preacher. Boy, you guys went. Anyway, Luke 22. Verse 55. Luke 55. When he had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall. So. We're underneath the floor, Mark, and then we move out Matthew, Mark, onto, I'm going to say like a balcony. That underneath in Mark is a hall. And we're set down together, so there's, there's seats. Peter sat down amongst them. But a certain maid beheld him sat by the fire. Okay, there's, there's, a, there's a heart for fire going there. And earnestly looked upon him. She's staring at him like this. And said, this man was also with him. And he denied him, not the woman. Did you get that? He denied him. Who? Jesus. Jesus said, before this night out, before the cock crew twice, you're going to deny me. Not the maid. Not the servant girl. Did you get that? He denied him saying, woman. Okay, there's the woman. I know him not. I don't know him. There are many people out there. I don't know Jesus. Too many are saved. Too many profess to be saved. They still don't know him. And after a little while, that, that keep little while, came. For a little while, another saw him and said, Thou also of them. Peter said, Man, <laughs> well, look at that expression. That's used today. Hey, man, what's up, man? What you doing, man? What's going on, man? My main man. <laughs> Listen, I grew up in the city. How they talked. <laughs> Yo, man, you going to, where did that come from? It comes from the King James Bible. I am not. That's why how he uses I am. Yes, you are, Peter. We're not going to do it, but we can go, we can go back into the gospel and we can look where you were ordained and you were sent out with the twelve. And by the space of one hour. So Jesus is standing there. And it's not five minutes. Okay, we're good, we're done with Jesus. Peter's been out there for an hour and more. 
And at the end, Jesus turns around and looks at him. And when when Jesus came in before the chief priest, Peter came and sat down with these monkeys. Here, about an hour. Verse 58 says a little while. How long was a little while? I don't know. Meanwhile, Jesus is being rebuked, and they're getting false witnesses. They're, they're smiting him. They're spitting on him. They're, they're, they're buffeting in him. You think they're taking a Peter time out? Hey, check out Peter. No. About one hour after another, confidentially, they sure Affirmed. This guy says, listen, I will swear. Saying of a truth. Confidently affirmed truth. So this person had to see Peter with the twelve. He probably had to see Peter with James and John with Jesus. Maybe when he was sent out two by two, maybe Peter came to this guy's city. Because he confidently, confidently, he affirmed of truth. I also with this with him. For he is a Galilean. And the statement is, you know, those Galileans with their religion. Christianity began in Antioch. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. Meanly while he yet spake the cock crew. And there's a possibility, I don't know what you're saying. Some are saying, well, listen, okay, he's from up north. He don't understand the people in Jerusalem. I don't think so. I don't think it's, I mean, it, it, it's, it's different. But Peter's been traveling all over Israel. Tyre and, and uh, uh, Jericho. And the Lord turned. So there is Jesus. And looked upon Peter. All right, so maybe the covering came off his head or they haven't covered him yet. But he can see Peter. There's a point that we read the other night is they took a cloth and put it over his head and beat him. How is Peter seeing Jesus? His face is okay, or is he seeing a face that's disformed, bleeding, and spit? Look at him like, okay, smarty pants. You'll never deny me. And he just pictured the this, this spit. And the blood. Maybe a broken nose. Black eye. If this is after the beating. Looking at Peter's. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said unto him. Before the cock crawl. Thou shalt deny me thrice. Oh no not me Lord. John 18. Better be careful what you say. I've had the Lord kick my butt. Sixteen. Eighteen, sixteen. But 
Peter stood at the door without, and then went out that other disciple, John, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought Peter in. So where Peter is, John, the apostle John, knows the high priest and everybody, allows Peter to come into this room. John will be at the cross. Then says the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of the men's disciples? He says, I am not. And the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. So the time of the Passover, it's cold. Cold enough that we got to have a fire going. They warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them, and he warmed himself. And that's a message by many preachers. I preached and said unto Jesus, okay. Now verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. He's not with the disciples. He's not with Jesus. He's with the unsaved. And he's cold. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of the disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off. Oh, this, now we know the why. I surely, I certainly know the truth. My cousin, my uncle, he cut off his ear. Did not I see thee in the garden with him? You didn't get that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. Then they take Jesus out. While this is happening to Peter, can I say, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God, my Savior, is getting whipped, he's getting beaten, he's getting spit upon, they're making fun of him, and he hasn't even gone to the Roman people yet. This is done. He came unto his own, his own received them not. But this is how they're treated. This is why there's a period to come in tribulation for the Jew. That's God taking the Jew over his knee, whacking his rear end. And after he gets settled and things are made right, then he's going to call his son. Then I come, let's. I wonder at each time that Peter, the three times, I wonder at the moment when he, when he says, I know him now, I wonder what is happening to Jesus. And is Peter catching it? I don't know what you're talking about. Damn! Come on, Jesus, tell us who did, who did it. Damn! Come on, Jesus, tell us who did it. I don't know who he is. Oh. And we learn John is there. And John doesn't open his mouth. The only time John opens his mouth, he let Peter in. 
We know John's at, at the cross. And you got to read the Bible to read it, not scan it. Okay, I did my reading for today.